Kulufelo Maponya, a heavyweight of business, a business titan uh, in South Africa and the black uh, elite. Uh, you know, I, I go around telling people um, that you're my mentor. And sometimes I, I want to be like, yo, he's like a father to me. But yeah, that's such a bullshit story. You're like a, a naughty older brother <laughs> that made a lot of money and who's been schooling me on a lot of uh, things. But um, I'm very happy to have you here. Uh, this is not an interview. This is a conversation. I know you've got stories for days, uh, but I want us to just chat. So please feel free. And I think just to kick off, um, the state of the nation is one of the biggest things we have now. And I know you and I have had many conversations about black people in particular. What is your feeling about where we are as a nation, black people, government, business? Uh, good morning, Penn, and thank you for welcoming me. <laughs> I'm not sure about the heavyweight. Maybe I, I, I've gained a few points. <laughs> <laughs> a a literal <laughs> heavyweight. <laughs> yeah, it's literal. Sure. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's sometimes very, very, very sad and very bad to belay by a point. Mm. And I think enough has been said. Uh, I always say. Talk, tell me the problem and then tell me the solution. Don't yeah. just tell me the problem. So, state of the nation, uh, am I a doomsayer? Am I an anarchy uh, propagandist? I don't want to be any of those. Uh, let's not cry over spilled water. Mm. Mistakes have been done where, where we are. We all know what the problem is. People are hungry. People are not sharing in the economy. Mm. People have the job mentality that no one in the world still has. Everyone in the world, even post-COVID, have realized that, hey, I have to have my own thing, my own trade. I have to have something that puts food on my table. I have to produce my own food. I have to do... But people are still looking up to an authority figure a messiah mm. if I may say uh, because that's how we have been religiously conditioned mm. uh, people you know read half verses in the bible Sure. they forget the part where they say uh, when Adam left uh, Eden yeah. God said to him that you shall uh, eat the sweat of your of your For, brow. Of, of your forehead. Mm. And your palms are work from here henceforth. Mm. It's the story of uh, idolizing the end, end result and not respecting the process. Yes, mm. but we do it because we, I would say we surrendered ourselves to all this ideal freedoms and TV uh, life. Uh, you switch on TV now, anyone can do anything, anyone can say anything, and 90% of programs are about living the good life. Of course. There's no program that tells you about the hard work. Mm, that's a fact. There's no program that tells you about things are being produced. When we grew up, there were factories everywhere. This country was manufacturing things. Mm. I'm not promoting apartheid, by the way. But... Things were being done, whether it was in a Bantu stand, in a township, or in a, a so-called white area. People were providing for themselves. Mm. You know, I come from a farming background. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I use more Africans, so I know things in more Africans and Sipedi than <laughs> <laughs> English, so you'll excuse me. Sure. So there was this thing, Sorg for self, you know. I know Afri Forum speaks about self-dune. Yes, self-sorg, self-dune. Yeah. Self uh, maybe I'm speaking a higher grade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is no way in life that people can just idolize girls sleeping with older men for money. Mm. Prostitution, in effect. It's really prostitution. And I'm not saying this because I'm 
judging another man or another girl. Mm-hmm. I myself am engaged to a very young girl. Hi, bo. <laughs> another another Achimoroka. <laughs> another Silo. Yeah. You, you're, killing, you're killing the market for the young boys. Cheese. Yeah, no, we had to wait in line. <laughs> wait in line. <laughs> That's harsh. Uh, but uh, things happen in life that you you evolve. You don't plan your life. Mm. You don't plan who you fall for and how you do it. Yeah. And uh, I believe that being a pedophile is one of the worst things. I've got nine daughters. That's beautiful. How many children do you have in total? Eleven. Jeez, well done. One day I want to be like you. I'm counting. I just okay. got engaged to a young woman. You engaged? Jeez, yes. congrats. Congrats. <laughs> but not because who. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, I ran No jela jago restaurant. I love you. I love you. Are you comfortable to speak about um, your partner's past? I mean, you've got 11 kids, so the assumption might be where are the moms? Are you a polygamist? I know it's a slight deviation from what we were speaking about, I, but just quickly. I don't like labels like monogamy, polygamy, and whatever. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I have at different stages been married to more than one wife. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and now, you, now you're adding a new young wife. Uh, I am no longer with my ex-wives. Okay. Uh, if that's the okay, no, please, you please carry on. For. You were yeah. saying young girls are prostituting themselves because we've essentially lost our dignity, which we had during apartheid, where we were still doing for self, self sorg Yeah, I mean, uh, a body has become a transactional uh, production tool. tool. Mm. Um, a woman's body has become a factory. I, 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 I always ask, you know, my fiance and her friends. How much money do you earn? They say it's not about what I earn, it's about what the hubster or the boyfriend makes. Jeez. Say, no, but if you were to calculate what you earn and what he's supposed to earn, mm. and the rate at which the money gets chowed at Conga, mm. uh, I'm sure they won't sue me, right? <laughs> <laughs> you conquer loves publicity. Positive, so, negative. I think Ikonka loves publicity. You look at the income levels in South Africa. On average, a person makes a hundred. When we say a person is earning very well, is making a thousand rand an hour. Yeah. But at Konga, you blow it at five thousand rand an hour. Jeez. So you look at those relations, and you say, how is it sustainable? That's where corruption kicks in, mm. because. I want to go and buy drinks at Konka. Mm. I have to go and steal money so I can complete, compete with those guys. Mm. Back in the day, there were only 10 guys driving Mercedes-Benz. These you, days, you, everyone drives Mercedes-Benz, BMW. You ask yourself, hey, I've heard of people trading in their AMGs because they were spinning the tires. <laughs> At 8,000 kilometers, they realize that the tires are finished. They go to the dealership. They say, hey, uh, new tires, they say, are 50,000. Jeez. They say, ah, for tires. <laughs> then they trade in the car <laughs> because they can't buy the tires. So people live unpractical lives. Mm. People live lives. We no longer think. No one knows what they afford. If you tell them that this is what you afford, hey, You've always wanted to be the guys only. Yeah. You don't want Banaba to have these things. Yes. We also want them. We, we want deserve nice them. We want nice things. We want nice things. Okay, can you afford? Going back, sorry, uh, saying back in the day, there were only 10 guys who drove a Mercedes Benz. Obviously, your father and your uncle, the late Dr. Richard Maponya, they were two of the guys. Uh, how was that experience for you? And uh, wh- uh, why can't we also have soft things like the Maponias? I can't say unfortunately so because we, we were fortunate. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> they, they worked hard. Yeah. Not like the, we work hard, Yabelungu, when some guy 
says, why don't you also work hard and have it? <laughs> <laughs> those guys, those guys, they breached uh, the levers of apartheid. Mm. There are guys who got into business who also drove Mercedes, mm. who were paid by apartheid. So I don't want us to put all those people in the same, same categories. Person. Okay, you know. So there are guys who got paid uh, for promoting the system. Mm -hmm. There are guys who breached it. I think those guys deserved it because they worked hard. Mm -hmm. But they didn't drive that comfortable car. This is where now it becomes problematic also. Yeah. They didn't drive that comfortable car uh, to go and spite people. Mm -hmm. They did it to show off. Doesn't no, for sure they did it to thank themselves to self-recognize. You know, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, when you start doing self-actualization, yes. they did it for self-actualizations because most of the day, if you, if I remember my father's luxury cars, I saw them on weekends mm. <laughs> or when he was going to Johannesburg for a meeting. Sure, every day he was in a truck or in a buggy. Mm. So came the weekend, he had to at least, you know. Uh, pat himself in the, the back and assure himself that he's working for the right reasons. He is something he can enjoy for that one or two days. He can take his wife out for lunch somewhere. Mm. Uh, and you know, these guys were so discreet. They didn't go to town with this luxury cars. Really? Amabono would see the cars and they would stop giving them whatever they were. Jeez. <laughs> I hear you. So they drove the car in the township on that Sunday. They went to church. Sure. Mm, they visited family. They did this and that. It's a different co concept from what we see today where a person buys a three million rent car mm. and goes everywhere with it. By the end of the year, it's got 100,000 kilometers. It's showing off. It's almost seek, seeking external validation. Yeah. It's not a form of self-reward for work. Well done. It's to show off. Majid, I've made it. Yeah. Uh, look, at some point, uh, there's a Greek friend of mine I like quoting for you, uh, Mr. Jimmy. God uh, save his soul. is passed on. He used to say, he, he called himself a Greek philosopher. Uh -huh. for another day <laughs> <laughs> he used to say money is like a cough cough yeah you yeah. can't hide it mm. even if you want to conceal it it will come out you will cough you will go <coughs> <coughs> a little bit yeah so even if you buy a Nissan 1400 mm. you are going to be tempted to put mag rims on it <laughs> put the best sound system in it because you can. Yeah. So we're not encouraging anyone to live for poverty mm. or to idolize poverty. Mm. But do things for the right reasons and afford it. Mm. If, you may, if you've done well, I mean, hey, why not? But if you're going to steal people's things so that you do it, it becomes problematic. I've been fascinated from when I first met you. You know, they speak about a South African dream and a black man's dream. Uh, part of what uh, attracted me to you is that I'd met a lot of uh, black people who pretend to be rich. The ones that wear suits, air-conditioned officers. You lived like a king. Everyone who wanted to meet with you had to come to your space. And when they come to your space, they eat. There's always eating and feasting. Um, I learned your story. I learned the story of your family. Um, I think, for me, it's been exciting seeing a black man who has worked hard for his money, a black man who is second generation money, who is very comfortable in his skin. You know, you don't feel a need. I've seen the way you speak to white people, black people, there's almost nothing. You don't feel a sense of inferiority, almost like Nigerians. You know, so uh, I think from I my like side, you like them? The, 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 Confidence is inspiring. Confidence is insane. Yeah. They walk around like they rule the world. <laughs> yeah. um, just your thoughts on the black psyche, the inferiority complex, and I guess just the, the, the impact of what your father and your uncle have, have done. When you look at us normal black people who still get excited over small things, how do, you, how do you balance that psychologically for yourself? Do you feel like a king? Do you feel like a normal person? Do you look down on us like we're minions? 
Maybe I would get time to do that. Right now, I don't have enough time. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I'm still focused on surviving uh, with PIC. You know, we're almost at the end of the rainbow. Hey, because you've got legal cases. Yeah, we have legal cases, but, uh, you know, the current chairman of the PIC, he was on Power FM, I think, uh, you posed some questions there, or it was Ronnie McKenzie, I don't remember, but he he gave leadership and he said, come to the table, let's talk. Mm. We went to the table, we started talking. We are still talking. Mm. Uh, negotiations are one very frustrating thing, because mm. especially when you negotiate with the... Uh, what did you call them? Colossal... Uh, institution that holds everyone's future. Yeah, over two <laughs> over two trillion rand. The yeah. PIC holds. Yeah, it becomes it becomes problematic because no one wants to take the decision mm. that might be unpopular tomorrow. Mm. So settlements are about taking decisions. Yeah, and they are about evaluating what is on the table and not sentiments. And that's the battles we battle with. And they always put agreements and logic at risk because everyone is afraid of the risk. It's almost like politicians. They're scared of being outvoted yes. in future. But they're only scared when it's black people. I'm not mm. labeling them. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you an example. PIC went for a week breakaway with Steinhoff. A they, break came, away. they came back, they had written off half in billions and they had a way forward. Mm. Come Maponya, Maponya says, hey, I don't even want you to give me any cash. Just let me proceed and honor agreements. Mm. They are court judgments. They are this. It becomes a very political issue that if we give him discount on his settlement, people will think this and that. Mm. Uh, it, it, it is frustrating. It is actually the reason we went to court in the first place mm. was because every day there was no one who was willing to put pen to paper. And we're experiencing it. And hopefully, you know, because there's new leadership and they've shown a lot of leadership in the PIC. They've actually turned a few things around and got a few things moving. Uh, we still have hope and faith that we are not going back. You won your court cases, and yet they still kept dragging their feet. Yeah, you see, the law is very tricky. You win a court case, mm. you go to the Supreme Court of Appeal, you win, you go to the Constitutional Court, it upholds, and then comes this magistrate somewhere, comes mm. and says, ah, those guys might have been wrong. We are going to give uh, some temporary relief to suspend their decisions. This is like the Vodacom guy story, the please call me guy story. Constitutional exactly. court rules, no, but it's, man. He's it's fighting, still like you haven't He's won. fighting a conglomerate. They have money. They will bring some piece of the uh, constitution or some piece of another act. They will keep him busy until he's dead. Is that the legacy that the ANC and black people want? Because our legacy is that it's very easy to execute a black man. Mm. You can do it. There will not be, there, there will not be any headline. The there's headlines no, no went. I mean, the headlines went for me. The man who asked for co uh, co commission. The man who wanted this. Hey, you write a small affidavit. You give it to them. You say, "There's my story. Call me to the commission." Everyone disappears. The damage is done. Mm, they didn't call you to the commission. No, they didn't call me. The commission. They also didn't even have anything to say about me. But some white men stood there yeah. and made allegations unfounded and could not even back them up. And you, he said he had another guy. Do you think it's racism? Or do you think it's... Um, so we've heard the stories of... Uh, uh, it's self-racism ra racism. because we're in power. We're are, we are, we are doing the racism to ourselves. We let someone with a remote control press a button because... All of us are not used to... You know that thing you said, self sort mm. We are not used to making things for ourselves or getting things for ourselves. Mm. We are always afraid of the man 
that we are going to put our hand out to. Yeah. So the man we are going to put our hand out to when he has an opinion and he says, I don't like this guy. Everyone goes out. I don't think there's a black man who hates himself or who hates me. Mm. But they will hate me on behalf of someone else. Someone else. And they will hate me far better than that someone else. It's actually easier for me to reconcile with that someone else than with the uh, black people. The, the, um, when you look at yourself, when you look at Iqbal, survey of Segunjalo Independent Media, you see now some of the fights of Vokandan MCB and 360. There's, there's feelings that it's people that were pro-Zuma that are being washed out by Cyril, Cyril supporters and Cyril people, of which some of them, like his brother-in-law, are not white. So that's what I'm trying to figure it's, out. In your opinion, do you think pro, it's a race? It's pro-Zuma, pro this one. Like I'm, I've said to you, it's proxy wars. Mm. What is a pro-Zuma? What does Zuma have? He's got some round devils in Nkandla. Mm. Uh, what would he give me today or give Iqbal today? Mm. Not much. Should we say that he's wrong when he speaks something? Mm. Should we say our current president is wrong when he speaks something that I agree with? Mm. My president speaks something I agree with, I agree with him. Mm. The problem is when I disagree with him and I am told that you can't disagree with him. Mm. Then uh, we are running a banana republic because then soon we are going into decay and self... Uh, because even yourself, you have to, at the end of each and every day, self-introspect mm. and call yourself to order and ask yourself questions. If you don't do that and you don't have people who can do it, you are, you are destined for doom. You are the emperor who is naked. I, I want to go back to my question about the inferiority complex because it almost seems like, and even you've said it, it seems like there are no black business people in this country who are respected for being self in the sense that Julius Malima said he's not sure if Patrice and Cyril are billionaires. And it's almost, if you speak, people want to know who's your handler, who is behind oh, you. I've been asked that. People have been asking who's behind you. Mm. And one of the reasons everyone can fight me is because there's no one behind me. So, is that why maybe you get attacked? Because yes. people are like, you. who are you representing? Someone wants to, I think someone wants to uh, uh, capture me. <laughs> 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 or maybe there's a host of people who are fighting to capture. Yeah. Um, the first thing that you will see, if you see a black man being attacked mm. at that rate, you must know that he's on to something. Mm. Uh, you must know, uh, even Malema once said it, that if you see certain people get angry, you must know there's something right that that man is saying. Sure. So if you go and try and capture certain parts of the economy, mm. number one, financial sector. Mm. Uh, mining, mm. retail. Our economy is a monopolistic economy. There's five companies, I've said to you, there's five companies in each and every key industry. You Those five it, companies yeah. are owned by the same. Each one has a bank associated with it. Each one has a certain uh, cartel associated with yes, it. Yes, I wanted to use the term cartel. The country's, the country's economy is run by cartels in various industries. Man, uh, we are no different to Ecuador, where Juan Pablo used to run. Uh, we must just admit it. Or no, 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 no. Here we live in a cartel world. You go to the cartel, you are protected, mm. you can live. Even the but taxi if you industry. try and do your own thing, you get attacked, people become unhappy. I post things on my WhatsApp status. I get told not to be controversial. Mm. Uh, you ask yourself, oh, but why? I'm not a politician. Mm. I'm just expressing a view. And that view, I'm expressing it actually to assist people and advise that, look, if you are doing this, you might be overlooking this and that. If you are doing this, you are doing wrong. Mm. Or if you are doing this, hey, congratulations. I'm controversial for congratulating other people. I'm controversial for criticizing other people. Mm. As long as... I'm saying what I want, when I want, 
I'm happy. I'm happy to engage those who disagree with me. Mm. I have pulled a few off and apologized where I'm wrong. Mm. It's life. But it cannot happen that there are certain sectors in this economy or the whole economy that when you want to enter, uh, there must be a reason to take you out. Mm. So I decided, okay, I'm not going to play in that field of getting permission because no one is actually going to give me permission. They're not. So I started to you foods and I said, with this, I can go into market, I can do it, I can open shops. And I talk to financial institutions. I don't write anyone off. Mm. I talk to manufacturers. I talk to everyone. I work with everyone. Mm. But I am saying, I would like to have my own parallel economic system where I can run my own shop, give my own product, buy wherever I want, and I am not forced or dictated to. You know, when you go to these uh, financial institutions, including government, until recently, you would go to a government institution, and hence I say, there are good people in the current administration. Don't go Not, not everyone this. is bad. Not everyone is bad. Uh, the Minister of Small Business is one of those people who acknowledge that we need black business mm. in the sectors. I don't know how many ministers were there that I spoke to that never listened to me. Mm. But before this administration, I would go to small en uh, enterprise finance and I would say I can open these shops. I know how it works. My family has been in this business since 1976. Mm. I grew up running a shop. I've got the template. I've run a shop all my life. You know what I get told? Go and get a company that started in 1980 something, mm. in 1980s, 80 something or in 90-something and let them come and be your mentor. Open five shops. You can't open so many shops under them and let them supply you. You, you, you are a free black man. I'm asking this because do you find yourself as a free black man having to fight with captured black people? And when you speak, they catch feelings and it, it frustrates you because it's like you're dealing with oh man ching elani. I, I've told you in my previous meeting that I find it easier to work with Afrikaners because we relate on the same level. If I speak to a black man, he still has to go and seek validation from somebody else mm. who is going to seek validation from someone. Who makes the decision? I would like, I'm a free man. I would like to speak to another free man who makes a decision. When you tell the waiter, call your manager or call your owner. Yes. And some of these clever blacks, abafundile, no, sir, the procedures, I don't care about the procedures. I want the person that built this company because I'm at that level. Yes. And it's frustrating and it goes back to the inferiority complex. Mm. And that's where they then all con come together and say, let's collaborate to take him down. Yeah. So we compare each other about how low we are. Mm. But our point is that we are not. We don't say no. We are all elevating, going up. Uh, we are going to go and pa go past Maponya. No, 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 no. We must bring Maponya down here. And the first time I took the PSC to court, the the head of legal, who's now outside of the company, now, yeah. asked me, "Who do you think you are? Mm. Do you know who you are fighting?" I said, "I'm not fighting." I just want you to stick to the agreement. Inferiority complex. You've got black you've got black CEOs of these big companies who when you challenge them, they don't understand. There was a chairman of a major bank mm. that I went to and said, Hey man, I've got a problem with uh, your company. Mm. Actually two chairmen. One of them actually ended up being a chairman of the PIC. Mm. Uh, and I, when they appointed him, I said to myself, "Yer, he come back." <laughs> <laughs> but it was not him; it was this other one that I went to. But same reaction, similar uh, story. 
Mm. I've got a problem with your executives. As the chairman, can you intervene? Bring us to a table so we can show each other reason and resolve this matter. And the man simply said, you can't talk to me. I'm at board level. Jeez. The executive do. The executive, uh, I can't do anything. He wasn't recognizing you. Either he's not recognized by the executive and he knows it. Sure. That he has got fuck-all power. Yeah. Or he's simply saying to me, we don't have an interest in talking to you. Mm. Uh, because you are nobody. I know exactly what decision has been taken. Mm. But I'm inclined to believe that he actually was scared to expose himself. Mm. That but he's actually weak. He doesn't have influence. No, I think he plays golf mm. and goes to address uh, events. And I think most of all this chair, most of the chair people we have, very few, mm. uh, where you would find the executive being very respecting of this. Uh, I know uh, some chair people, actually a chairwoman of a large uh, FMCG uh, 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 company uh, who's coming from a political background that the executives actually respect and account to and mm. runs that institution. Sure. And she's a former ANC leader. She runs one of the biggest uh, FMCG companies in the country. So they're not all the same, I yeah. like I always say. But I'm the idiot who's not scared to call it what it is and call you what you are. Because... If you are a danger to society, I mean, society should know that you are dangerous. Mm. Yeah, and if you are useless, we should know you're useless. <laughs> that you're useless. <laughs> One of the things that's scary about you is uh, when, when you meet with some of these chair people, chairman, chairwoman, when you meet with some of these really wealthy people, because I've met some of them through you, you do it in shorts and a t-shirt and people are really confused. They're not used to that. Even some of the biggest black names in business in South Africa, they still show up in a suit and they speak good English. And you say, I don't care which CEO, he comes to my house and he'll meet me wearing a vest and we'll eat whatever I'm eating. But you said I'm a free man. I'm not as disrespectful. I wear suits, by the way. I have a lot of suits. <laughs> I wear suits. They are, relevant. they are relevant to certain occasions where you meet in boardrooms and all those things. But in my house... It's part, it's part of the game. I can't wake up in my house and wear a suit and tie and wait for... No, man. Is it part of the game to wear a suit If you are coming spaces? to my house, you are coming to a personal space. It means I acknowledge you. It means I have been comfortable with you. Mm. You should be comfortable with me. Mm. So uh, we're in a private space. You can't you can prescribe to me. But even if today is a holiday, mm. Africa is a very hot place. Sure. We're a naturally hot continent. Yeah, for me to be going around wearing cardigans and... Uh, and a tie. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> so there's a time and a place to wear a suit? There's a time and a place. I don't disrespect people. No one In other get spaces. Me wrong. Okay. Uh, but I don't have... If I am working, for mm. example, I work a lot, I run a lot, I work in warehouses, I work on farms. I can't wear something that doesn't give me comfort. Mm. Um, to me, it's just clothes. Has your, has your surname helped you a lot in business, number one? Number two, um, has it opened up BEE opportunities? Would you say that your, your father and your uncle were BEE faces and fronts? Both my father and my uncle decried and never wanted BEE. So, uh, Wh why there. not? And I also do not promote BE. There's no one, I told you many times, Mlo mm. Chua cannot give money to Kibine and leave his children. Mm. So if you say BE, you are asking other people to take their children's money and give it to other people. Mm. 
Mm. It's impossible. Is Black a- economic empowerment is supposed to be where you give blacks the opportunity to be on their own, mm. manufacture their own things and supply government. Mm. Don't tell them to go into somebody's company who doesn't want them mm. and buy those shares at a high price and then f- come and finance them with a scheme that is going to make sure that at the end of the finance period, you are taking the shares back. Jeez, for nothing. I've seen that. Yeah, it happens a lot. It's a scam, and I think it's a scam a lot of people don't know. You buy PE shares, or you get given a a debt. I learned the hard way because I went to go and buy a business, and I took debt, and not being a financial and legal expert, I took the debt... And when the things started coming out, I realized I'm in a hole. Mm. And I went back and I said, no, we can't have this hole. Let's renegotiate. They said, no, we don't renegotiate with blacks. I mean, all other people have been renegotiated out of their bad positions. Mm. Daily, people renegotiate out of bad positions. But when you're black, you're stuck. You're in, you're in. Mm. Blacks honor contracts. Even those that guarantee them death. But everyone else is justified to say, no, he's a clever businessman. He opted out of it. Mm. Renegotiate and went back to the table. No, 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 no. no. He's not honorable. Mm. So we have have, have so many standards. Uh, So, yeah, BE is not something that I ever thought I would be in. Mm. Uh, I did transactions classified as BEE, but I did them commercially. They were in my line of business. They were things that I was doing. Mm. Um, The BEE part is the one that uh, messed up the things. And like I say, we're in the process of fixing it. I hope we get it over the line and fix it. And uh, I can continue with business mm. and with shaping what is supposed to be the real BEE, which is if I have to you foods and I need water, yeah, uh, I go to Lavadi mm. in Soweto and they give me the water and I put it in a store. Yeah, that money I can trace it. The value chain. The value chain. If I want to produce an advert, mm. I go to Debza and mm. I say Debza. Uh, here is an advert. If I work with a company that produces coffee mm. and they say uh, we need to advertise coffee with your stores, I can say if you are going to advertise with me involved, you are going to in- have to involve this man and that man. And that's how these guys all, all protect each other and give each other business and it so I want a system where I can say, do this, do that. At daybreak, I give young black people transport contract. I give them cleaning contracts. As a developer, I can show you many developers, I've told you, that are now big developers that I give contracts. Mm. Property development. Yes. Uh, actually, there's a nice story. There's a guy that I gave a contract to do some civil works uh, on a development. And eventually, uh, this guy comes from Venda. Mm. Uh, people from Venda are very entrepreneurial. Sure. That's true. Um, then I gave him a contract, the same houses you are talking about. He did the civil works on the houses in the, my houses in the estate. Mm. And I said to the engineer, you're going to appoint somebody that fits this and is a black person. Mm. And this guy, I go to a bank now that I have a deep, I can't produce my own equity in other projects. And I say, I'm looking for 100 million. They say, produce your own equity of uh, 50 million. I say, hey, I've got a problem. Mm. So my guys, when they are on the 
team, they say, no, man, we doing this thing. We have got an approval with a major bank to do this development in Guyane. By the way, uh, I've built a few cities and I'm building three brand new cities. Uh, and one of them, actually two of them between two chiefs are in Guyane. Jeez, that's proper. So we're starting with phase one, which is the residential area of about 250 houses. So I said to the guy, I said, hey. So they talked to him innocently. This man says, hey, Mr. Maponya, give me a very big break in life. Mm. Uh, where's the contract? I will sign. I will do your civil works, which are worth 35 million rand. You will pay me when the project is finished. Cheers. This is a young man I didn't know from above, so I gave him a small contract. Mm. I gave him another small contract. Today, he can give me equity of 35 million. Mm. Imagine if blacks did this to other blacks, how many people would be helping each other right now? Yeah. I want to ask, sorry, um, has, your fa has your family name, Umaponya, helped you a lot in business, protected you? It's helped me. It's also caused me uh, problems. Mm. People think I'm a previously advantaged person. Are you not? No. Your father I'm didn't a, leave you a lot of wealth. A, Are I'm you a, not a trust fund baby? I'm a... I'm a person with an inheritance. Mm. Call me a trust fund baby somehow. Unfortunately, my father lost a lot of his money in his lifetime due to the democracy that we have. I had to leave school and rebuild my family uh, business. Mm. Save it from going down, rebuild it, and take it to where it is today, where people still respect the name Maponya. So I inherited a name, mm. I inherited a foundation, and I made sure that that foundation does not sink. When I say Maponya, the biggest thing that it helps me with is track record, integrity. Mm. So those old men made sure that they leave that legacy, that people have a reference mm. to put to the name. Mm. And that I think every Maponya should be grateful for and should not do anything to jeopardize that. In terms of other people thinking that we are previously advantaged, uh, it's a very big disadvantage because our parents took a lot of people to school. They didn't chow profits and go to Dubai. Mm. They took people to school. They funded the ANC. Uh, they, they funded uh, Azapo. They funded all structures. They made sure that every child where they worked had a decent opportunity. You say you come to my house, you find people eating. When I grew up at my home, at my father's business, there was always a, a pots in the yard. Huge pots. Huge pots. All workers ate there, the whole family ate there, all visitors ate there. Mm. I went to South Korea, into the factories. Every factory has a kindergarten and has a canteen. Mm. And that's what I apply when I build a business, when I build a warehouse, when I build anything. Like a family structure, it's communal a family structure. structure. People should not have problems of saying who's going to mind my child. Because this is how people rape little children. Mm. From, uh, they, they, the mother is forced to be at work. The malume is sitting with the child. Mm. He's drunk. He does these things. Mm. But if there's a safe place where the mother is working, if they feed the child, because they really, I mean, every human being has to eat. Mm. 
if we realize uh, in Sipedi we have a saying, di jogi chila ya meno, hadile wohwe. It means food is not something that people should be grateful for. Mm. And literally, I, I practice that. If you find people eating, you're not supposed to ask for food. You're supposed to wash your hands and start eating. Mm. It's not something people... We, are, we live like animals. It's worse than animals. It's worse animals, than animals. Animals eat. Animals yes. freely eat. For us, it's a process and you have to beg and you have to... Exactly. So... Everyone that walks into my home, into my company, into everything, as long as we are doing well, they should eat. I think what's important for me to add, I try. Uh, I've also picked it up along my experiences. I try to, when I visit you and when I visit other people, to bring something. Because there's something we call Ubuntu, and a lot of people think it's one directional. Mm -hmm. And as much as you're coming to eat and put your hand, if you have a little banana, bring whatever, and let's share. People need to... Especially black Africans. You don't have to have much, but, yeah. but just bring, bring something so we all enjoy. Even my, if it's the cloth that the people my, wipe my, their hands with when they're done. My uncle taught us that. Yeah. Uh, we had butcheries, we had meat. They wouldn't say because there they have meat and everything, we're not bringing anything. Mm. They would come from Zanin or Skuku, Nevaya, wherever. Mm. And they will bring fruits and vegetables to the house. Mm. And say, here is food for the children. And when they leave, they'll leave with meat. Mm. Add you, value. you like talking about buttering. Yes, add value, bring value. Yes, when you go to those with meat, you bring what you have. You take what they have. Mm. You go forward, uh, you go to those that have shoes, you give them food, they give you shoes. Mm. You will never see a vacuum. A lot of people have asked me, or uh, this fights with the PIC, uh, you know, sometimes people lock all the taps and say, I won't have money. Mm. And I say, but what do I need money for? I eat, I have relatives, yes. I have friends. I have family, I have a network that can take care of me. So, if you... If I don't have cash, it does not mean I don't have money to live. Yeah. Both my father and my mother had no fear. Uh, they were trailblazers. My uncles were trailblazers. Um, my mother would tell me that a girl child or anyone can do anything. Mm. And she did it. So my father, they told him, you can't open a Toyota garage in a village. He went and he got bulldozers, he put everything out. He went to Toyota, he applied for, I think, nine years. They, they refused. Mm. But he cleared their side. He never said they refused. He always said, no, they will come. Mm. He cleared their side. He removed a lot of uh, rubble. And he started building. He said, give me what would be needed if you have to approve my dealership. Mm. They gave him. They thought it was, he was joking. He went and built it and he said, no. Give me the license. Um, there's an assumption uh, with white monopoly capital, in inverted commas, there's an assumption with the Maponia family that you guys as the second generation, maybe the third generation as well that's come up, of which I've met some of them, that you guys are all sitting together and you're all happy and you share the same vision and you... Uh, can you please debunk, if, if it is even a debunking, that myth that the Maponias are all helping each other and... and because I've, I've got a little story to, to tell and, and to ask you. We, we are like every other family. Mm. We have our own challenges. Uh, we do sit together. We have, we have a society called Maponya National Unit. Hey. Uh, we have battles for positions. <laughs> <laughs> But the most important thing is that we keep going to the commonality and what it is that brings and makes us one. Mm. Uh, we fight, you know. My children sometimes go on strike. Currently they are on strike. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all part of their growth, part of my growth. 
Mm. It's all to fix certain things that are right or not right, perceived right, perceived wrong. Mm. There's no dynamic that differentiates us from anybody except the commitment to always come back and say, uh, who are we? You know, that identity, that unity. Mm. Uh, we also have a coat of arms that we develop. It's beautiful. And, 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 and we, we, we are going to call Minister Mteto to also help us. With the <laughs> <laughs> of course, I want to mention two things. The first one being, for me, um, it's been drafting a family tree, which we've never done before. Drafting a family tree and realizing, I didn't even know Om Lojwa, where I come from, Ozi, it's on Tumbeza. We have a family totem as well, which is a spider. We have a family tree. I just forgot what the tree was, a, a physical tree that is our I identifier. Because that starts opening you up to understanding some of the family principles. And then you start writing this book, the family guidance book or the community guidance book. Mm -hmm. The second thing, I, I like that you mentioned the Muslims. It's, it's, and I've said this about Africans. So the Christians, Europeans, they have Sunday school and you read the Bible as a reference point. Africans haven't written these books that are known as reference points. And not only do you write the books of Oma Ponya, this is the, our history, this, but further go to Madrasa, where every well. day, every week, the kids are being taught. So that come funeral, wedding, you have to sing a song, you've been trained. But remember, blacks were oral. Yes. So we used to do this around the fire. Mm. Oko Oko used to sit at the fire uh, in the evening and explain these things. In the morning, when you wake up, Ilkesha or Amakesha as is by it. Mm. The, the fire is already there. Mm. So when you go to eat umtoho, you sit in Amakesha and they give you the morning lessons before in common Zopum. Mm. So we don't have those now, we have books. Yes. We are supposed to go to those gogos and get those evening stories. But there's a lot of books about yeah. those stories. Uh, that were around the campfire. We were discussing this actually uh, with one Mkwenya and our Sekaya. We were bearing Obama Mkwenya on Saturday. And Mkwenya uh, is a record. Mm. And we were lamenting the fact that when people eat these days, we have learned things we have never known. When I grew up, my father was one of the busiest people I knew. Mm. But I knew at six o'clock, whether set up lane or goopy, but we are here at six o'clock. And no baba, no mama bakon. If he's busy, he has to go back to the shop or to the bar lounge or whatever, he goes back. Mm. We eat amakota, neipatro, that causes us obesity. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Self-hate. Randomly. <laughs> no discipline. Mm. When you are there, you are sitting and you are eating. At breakfast, at lunch, and at dinner. At least two of this must be done. Mm. You then, Ubaba, we have booze, but hey, Mdanam, Belinja ni Langala. Then you relate, I'm a jail, baby, I'm shy. You know, you, 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 you may take those things lightly, mm. but that is where then you get built, you get uh, molded, mm. you get given advice there and then, you get given solutions. But if you don't congregate, you don't sit at one place, mm. then they will tell you uh, mm. when they relate a story that re resonates with what you are doing. 100%. They will tell you uh, about someone else in your family who went somewhere uh, and came back with this problem and this problem was sorted that way. That is the way in which counsel is developed. Wisdom, uh, knowledge sharing. Mm, knowledge sharing. If, if 
I can just get every black family mm. to have either breakfast or dinner as a starter. Mm. A rule at home. At this time, we do this. Mm. Uh, 50% of our behavior and our problems disappear. will disappear. I hear you. Every family needs a, a watering hole where they can meet or a buffet table, whether it's daily, monthly, once a year, whatever. And you must encourage communication and knowledge sharing. I was attacked. Uh, I had a conversation with Tutebza about uh, when, when Ontlantla Lux were defending Maponya Mall last year with the looting. And I was saying uh, Maponya Mall was built on a lease. Uh, the late Dr. Richard Maponya had to partner with the uh, Jewish property company and, and other white institutions to build. And I, I think part of your family members uh, had issue with me saying that uh, I just wanted to know your thoughts around not necessarily Maponya Mall, but some of the partnerships that your family has chosen or has had to undergo to further their business interests, you know, number one. And um, number two, I guess it's... No, I think, I think let's just keep it there. Some of the partnerships you've had to make with... I, I wanted, oh, number two was the Nefcock story and, and your thoughts around where Nefcock started and, and what happened to Nefcock. By the way, I use, I, I'd, I'd use you to defend myself every time my <laughs> Maponya people and some of their messengers came to me. I'd be like, no, but uh, my mentor Kulu fellow and I. <laughs> Let me tell you, in this country, black people don't have money. Let's cut the bullshit. Mm. For a black person to go and build a mall, you have to have some white guy or some white bank or some white whatever or some Muslim because those are people who have uh, put themselves together. They organized. There are sporadic blacks who have money and most of them, those sporadic, have made money with the same groups of people. Mm. So they will also come with their friends, if you call them. Mm. So every development you see, there is a partnership between a bank or some Jewish or Muslim people. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you say some people in my family uh, disagree, but it's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Uh, the old man had to build a mall. He needed finance. He structured finance. Mm. He had the land. It was his. He didn't steal it. He bought it. Uh, he had part of it. He, the other was transferred uh, to him uh, by Transnet. Uh, and I know that because I was there. Hey. And the chairman of the board that transferred the land to him was went on to become chairman of Invested, which was a bank that financed him. Jewish bank? Yes. They financed a lot of people. Uh, they take their share of the skin or of the flesh, or their mm. pound of flesh. <laughs> but they gave a lot of people breaks yeah. that conventional banks wouldn't. That's mm. how they managed to build that bank up so quick. Sorry, sorry. The Jewish, Jewish people, just to mention, if, you, if people study the history of this country, they were willing to work in townships and in black spaces when it was unfa they, unfavorable they to do were, so. They, they, they funded the ANC, they worked with the ANC. Mm. So, hence I say, there has there's been partnerships all over. Yeah. And uh, some of us also have Jewish relations. Afrikaans relations. I know, I know some uh, of your business partners. You, <laughs> you work with everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So... The old man did what he did. I don't think his business is public uh, business, mm. but he had a structure. He put up a structure. I don't. And it wasn't selling out. No, it was a finance. It was a financial deal. Mm. Uh, if a black bank existed to I've fund built, him, he would have worked I've built, with him. I've built three, four malls with uh, Jewish uh, and Africans uh, partners. Mm. I didn't have much money but i had the properties mm. but you know i went out of the shopping center and mall business because of my principles which don't put bread on the table but i had i said someone has to stop 
mm. at some point bringing all these people into the environment that does not benefit the locals. Yes. So I went to look for a solution that caters and builds the locals. Mm. So that solution is to you foods. Mm. And to you foods because has, we, because has we, its own model mm. of malls and properties that cost those people a fraction of what those concrete structures, you know, we pay 80% we pay for is the concrete. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because we understand that malls, uh, as much as they may create jobs and the like, they, they disempower a lot of locals. And with To You Foods and the model you're going for, it's saying, we appreciate malls. I've been in the mall business, but looking at the track record, this is not empowering the people as much as it should. And we want a better model that is inclusive of the people. Yes. Those things, they have to go to... People have to go to them. They don't come to them. We take... Uh, the experience to the people. Yeah. Uh, and we take the opportunity to the people. Mm. We don't come with somebody and say, this guy is going to come here, he's going to take your money and take it back to Sentin. No, we're saying, hey, this money is going to stay here. Mm. Uh, maybe the mayor of Sentin or some <laughs> problem with me. <laughs> I want to ask about Navcock and then I've got two more questions so, for you. Navcock, if you go to any other country, there is a chamber in every city. Mm. There is a chamber in every province. There is a chamber in every national movement. I mean, uh, national structure. Business is supposed to be done through chambers. Mm. It's a good way of organizing business and also vetting. But it may also be a bad way in terms of creating cartels. But most chambers I've seen uh, are run by small business owners. Is a chamber like political parties in business type of situation? It's like a council. It's like okay. a municipal council, but it's for the business, for business in the local. If there were local chambers in every area, like you find this <laughs> in one village, there's three forums. Mm. Those forums are supposed to be chambers. Mm. We would know... How many shops are there if every shop had to register with a chamber? Yeah. I recently registered a company in Amsterdam. I had to join the local chamber. Sure. <laughs> so uh, I am a member of the Amsterdam Chamber of Commerce. Hey. And Nafcock was founded alongside the same principles. Mm. All Africans in every area were members of these chambers, irrespective of which business you did. Mm. They were able to be a power block and know that they are representing business. Like Africans, uh, uh, what do they call it? Product point. No, 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 no. There's uh, the, the Africans uh, uh, business chamber. No, 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 no. Uh, I forget the name, mm. but it's there. It's a very formal structure. There's a business unit. Mm. It's a chamber. Those chambers, they have members in every town. If Navcock had members and operated like that and represented businesses, mm. it would still be alive. It would still be the Navcock that my uncle formed, that my father worked for, for all his life. Mm. Right now, everyone can register as a member of NAFCOC and just go there and be voted in as leadership without functional local structures. Mm. So if you tell me about NAFCOC, I wouldn't know who they represent mm. because the people whom they represent are in businesses that we can't identify. They're in the tender business. They say so-and-so civils but they don't have a yard with excavators and all those things mm. where you can say Quena uh, Civils is in that address. Mm. And those are the people that currently lead NAFCOG. You, you, you were speaking about how you had to abandon your own journey to go back and, and work on what your, your father had built to make sure it doesn't disappear and be dismantled. 
Do you not feel for yourself, some of your relatives, Wamaponya, other young business people, and legacies as well? Dr. Sam and I've spoken to one of his grandchildren. Is, it not, is that also not part of your responsibility, either to revive NAVCOC or to build a similar structure? Because you're clearly saying there's a need for such. There's only so much and so little that one person can do. Yes. My focus is on building to you foods. My focus is on putting a foundation for a, a parallel economic structure. When I say parallel economy, uh, people might misinterpret it as saying that you want to have a parallel government or whatever. No. Mm. Like I said, I want to create an economy where everything is started from scratch or is done by the people that I am associated with. Mm. As opposed to wanting to plug into an economy that's that, that does not want me. I hear you. So I don't want to force myself into people's things. Mm. Um, I want to compete them. They do theirs, we do ours. Um, why so much passion for black business? For example, a black parallel economy. Why not just focus on merit? You work with people from different races. Why are you not just championing that people must work together? And why is such a deep passion for black people being uplifted? Very contradicting reasons. Mm. First, I'm black. I must be passionate about myself and mm. those around me. So self-love okay. is the first passion. Secondly, because I'm jealous of my money as a black person going to someone else over me. And building their communities. Somebody, I, I, I'm building somebody's community. Mm -hmm. I'm building somebody's wealth instead of starting with me. Mm. So when I say black, uh, as a businessman, I'm a selfish person. I'm, I'm looking <laughs> after myself. <laughs> Jeez. So black is me. Yeah. <laughs> they say black like me. Yeah. So black is me, yeah. uh, number one. And then my cousin, my brother, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, yeah, so I'm passionate about me. I'm passionate about my money coming back to me and mm. not finding its way to somebody. Do black people, small black business owners in particular, do they understand? We spoke about cartels earlier and you're speaking about people that won't let you in. Do you think small black business people actually understand that business is war and it's not a friendly match and people won't just let you in? I would say we have not been well educated or we also sometimes ignore things, but in walking the length and breadth of this country, you'll mm. be shocked how people in rural villages have such a clear understanding of uh, how the economy should work. Mm. I find, uh, you know, just like Fanon, I find urban blacks to be the worst problem. <laughs> A clever plex. Because people in the rural areas are clear. They understand what they must do. They understand uh, politics from a better perspective. Mm. It's the ones in the urban areas who are dependent and want to rely and assimilate to their masters that they actually are the problem and they are the ones who are in the press and everywhere. Mm. Black people understand what they need to do and what they actually want and they are ready to do it. The noise comes from the clever blacks. I hear you. And that's, that, 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 that name is not liked by many people, but I'm supposed to be a clever black. <laughs> <laughs> are you comfortable to speak about uh, how much funding you got from the PIC, um, what you did with it? And obviously, in closing, maybe then speak about how just people can get involved with what you said is your, your passion and your everything now, which is to you food. Uh, I was associated with different fundings from the PIC. Mm. I'll give you a summary. Uh, I went to the PIC with two proposals for two funds. Mm. Uh, the second fund actually had a third 
fund leg, uh, legging behind, which was student accommodation. But I went there with an agriculture fund mm. and with a housing development fund. Mm. Those are my key businesses. I'm in the foods business. I'm in the housing business. Mm. I'm at the lowest level of Maslow's hierarchy, providing basic needs. Yeah. Those needs, my father told me, will never disappear. I've seen it with my own eyes, and that's where I concentrate. And the deals that I did with the PIC are all linked to those. People must eat. People need a place to sleep. Yes. So we negotiated for the two. And in negotiating for the two, other opportunities showed up within those uh, things. Mm. So we were negotiating 2 billion rand housing fund and a 2 billion rand agriculture fund. Scary amounts for a normal person. Um, in the process, with the agriculture fund, we were actually intending to buy Avgri poultry, which we later renamed Daybreak. Mm. The people at Avgri, were, the management was busy with a take out from the and a deal listing from the JSE and they had fallen out with their BE partners they needed a BE partner we were not looking for BE and we actually <laughs> refused yeah and we said we don't want to jeopardize what we are negotiating with the PIC with this BE deal of yours because we, housing was our first priority and we were only looking for the poultry Mm. in their business, which is a business I started working in in 1987. Mm. I wanted to do what I've been doing all my life. Yeah. PIC uh, approved Afgris' request to treat the deal as a separate transaction, mm. and they gave us 380 million rands to buy into... Uh, Afgri. Mm. Uh, while negotiating the housing deal, SA Home Loans uh, came to our radar. Uh, we actually coincidentally employed the services of someone who had resigned three weeks uh, earlier from yeah. JP Morgan that owned the 50%. Mm. So the story about the PIC, uh, me being a darling of the PIC, I didn't get to that deal because of the PIC. Mm. I had known about the deal. I had inquired with people at the PIC and they had said, yeah, the people are here, they are talking to us. Mm. They wouldn't talk to you, you don't have money. <laughs> so when I spoke to this lady and she gave me background, I said, but I can sell something to both parties. Mm. So I sold my story to both parties and said, let's incorporate my fund that I'm applying for from the PIC into this transaction. Mm. You get to sell your shares. The company gets to become BE empowered. Compliant. PIC gets to give its uh, members of its biggest shareholder or uh, funder, the GPF, housing through the fund. Mm. Solutions for everyone. Solutions for everyone. So we got uh, into a negotiation. We got into the deal. They were supposed to fund us about 800 million. Mm. They decided in the middle of the deal to take 50% of the 50% we were negotiating. Because we didn't have money, we gave in, we negotiated that if they were to sell, they would sell it to us. Mm. But we wanted the money. Mm. So they funded us 400 million. Okay. All the other deals then come as deals within these deals. The daybreak deal, 1 billion, one billion rand mm. comes in after. But it was actually the deal that brought us to the table. Yeah. Uh, the development fund, the deal that brought us to the table, mm. 1.5 billion, it was given to SA Home Loans and not us directly, but it was for the development fund that we wanted. Mm. Mahai Makaya, we got given 500 million. 
So this is the two billion we originally came for. Sure. Ended up in two transactions outside of this other two transactions we made. Mm. I hope that answers your no, question. No, thank you. It's a beautiful story. And I think a lot of people don't understand business at, at high levels. You know, Brian Joffe of Bitvest has said, whenever people come work for Bitvest, he asks them to remove as many zeros as possible to make looking at the numbers more comfortable for them. So if it's a 7 billion rand deal, but you're comfortable with 7,000, remove some of the zeros and say, okay, I'm working with 7,000. Because you're given money by the PIC and a normal person would be like, Ay, but this guy's greedy, why does he keep getting money? You get a home loan. The bank approves a home loan and you realize in your home there's space to build rooms. And you go and you get an extension to build rooms and then someone says you've been greedy. Exactly. You go and you get a loan to buy a farm. It's a chicken farm. And on that chicken farm, you see that some of the soil is fertile and you go and extend money because you're like, we can actually plant here. But a normal layman, again, going back to the inferiority complex lack of experience, not having parents that have shown you that these things are possible. For a lot of people, it becomes confusing. And sadly, for even a racist white person, at the lower levels, at middle level mostly, because the higher levels, it's normally business wars. Those people just don't understand why this guy is getting money. People are angry. Yeah. <laughs> you must understand. A lot of people are angry. Yeah. Uh, and they're angry at everything else, th everything else that they see that they just put everything in one pot. Of course. So sometimes you need to understand that we are not all at the same level. Oh, snap. In, in closing, <laughs> um, for every... We love young people very much because they are the future of this nation and this world. To every young black boy, girl, to every young white boy, young girl, to every Indian, Chinese that are going to be watching this conversation, looking at the state of our country politically, looking at the state of this country economically, looking at all the fights and the squabbles. If you were to be given a platform like Ramaphosa gets family meetings and they say, Mr. Maponya, what advice would you give young people in order to change this country around? What would your advice to them be? Stop idolizing fake lives. Mm. Uh, start thinking of Everything that you see, that it was produced by somebody, who and why not you? Mm. And be realistic to the situations you are in. We're in a majority black country. If you are going to go and socialize with majority whites because you are white or majority Indians because you are Indians, you are losing on an opportunity to be a South African and to know South Africa, learn a black language, at least one. Mm. At least one. At least one. And I'm saying it to even the black children who, because they don't know their True. own languages. True. Learn at least one black language. Everyone learns their themselves in their own language and in their own culture. Don't be ashamed of it and say, I don't know that language. You know, this is what they teach our little children. Yeah. They call our languages that language. Mm. And uh, you, you, you see this proud person who is proud that their children mm. uh, So I'm saying to all the young people, Take the opportunity of being non-racial, of being a building people, not non-racial in the sense of the political whatever, but yeah. in terms of just seeing business opportunity, mm. just seeing yourself as a member of a country. Uh, non-racial is also applicable vice versa. Yes. When you exploit someone, don't say I can't exploit them because they are black, I'm black. <laughs> if you have to exploit them, exploit them. <laughs> this guy's a real businessman. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. If you if you're going to help someone, don't help them because they are black or mm. they are white. Mm. Help them because they are human. Yeah. Uh, just do things because you are you and this is what you want to achieve and this is how you're going to benefit your family mm. and your community. In closing, to you foods and how people can get involved. 
What is To You Foods, just in a short summary, and then how can people get involved? To You Foods is a miniature supermarket operating on a, a fourth industrial revolution technology. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Um, future of retail. Future of retail. Less operating stock. It's not something new. Willis did it. Mm. They beat most of the guys. Uh, that's why they show super profits. Uh, we are doing it in a much more ruralized way. Mm. And we are doing it in a much more compact way. Bring in stock every morning. Don't keep stock in the stores keep as little in the warehouse, keep distributing on a daily basis. On demand is the new word. Uh, and that's what To You Food is. It's owned by the locals. Uh, it's a free enterprise system. We power it. We provide the property. As I said, we're in the property business. Sure. So, Ray, Ray, Ray Kroc, McDonald's. <laughs> We in the property business. We provide the property. You make your money. Yeah. Uh, we get our pound of flesh. <laughs> we only live a million after. How do people get involved? Website? www dot number two two mm. u uh, foods u with a u not mm. uh, dot c o dot z uh, dot z a www dot two u foods mm dot co dot za um, there's some people called uh, that uh, actually uh, copied our uh, i saw that yeah copied our uh, trademark am i allowed to say it we are no it's your show okay i'll say it because you can't say it so <laughs> I, I saw that spa the spa retail chain has taken this to you tagline yeah so we are very happy that they recognized us. <laughs> uh, they are copying us. Uh, we, are, we are dealing with it legally. Yeah. But uh, look, uh, when people run out of ideas and start doing what they are doing, it means you have an impact. Yeah. So we are proud of it. You know, We are getting copycats. Mr. Maponya, thank you so much. This is an open inv invitation to please keep coming back. You and I still have a lot, need to have a lot of conversations. Uh, on this platform elsewhere, especially in the spirit of building the majority of this country who are very lost, very miseducated. And um, I'm hoping we can make an impact and we can also leave a legacy like your dad, like your uncle and like other people before us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much and happy Women's Day. Happy by Women's the way. Day. Cheers. <laughs> happy Women's Month. Yeah, I, I, I usually remember this day because it's actually my niece's birthday. Beautiful. Yeah. Happy birthday to her. <laughs> Thanks, sir.